It has been almost seven and a half years since 13-year-old Abigail Williams and 14-year-old Liberty German were murdered while hiking near an abandoned railway bridge in Delphi, Indiana. For five of those years, it felt like investigators would just never make an arrest. The biggest lead was a tiny bit of video. It was actually captured on one of the girls' phones. It was a husky man ordering them down the hill. That was all they had to go on for a while. Well, now, of course, authorities say that man is a local pharmacy tech, this man right here named Richard Allen. But almost two years after Allen's arrest, the victim's families, they're still waiting for justice, and Allen insists he is innocent. And there have been all sorts of twists and turns with this one and all sorts of issues with the investigation. Uh, well, today he was back in court to see his lawyers accuse uh, prosecutors of withholding evidence and ignoring at least one other suspect. They say investigators never meaningfully questioned a man named uh, Brad Holder, that's his name, Brad Holder, who lives in a nearby town uh, and whose son had dated one of the victims. Supposedly, the man has ties to a pagan religion, actually called uh, Odinism. And supposedly, the crime scene indicates the killings may have been part of some Odinistic ritual. Prosecutors say uh, that that's absolutely ridic ridiculous. They don't want a jury to hear any of that stuff. Uh, but what does it mean for the trial, which is actually due to get underway in October? For that, I turn to Sky Lazaro. She's a criminal defense attorney uh, who tried over 100 jury trials throughout her career, from misdemeanors uh, to also homicides. Sky, thank you for being with us. Uh, Alan's attorney has basically said, look, every Tom, Dick, and Harry, even those who had nothing to do with the case, uh, had to turn over their phones. But this Holder man never had to. And they find that to be very, very strange. Do you think they have a point? I do. Uh, you know, the timeline that they point to as part of this, where he, he clocked out uh, at work and he wasn't that far from him, um, and then his, his ties to one of the victims, I think if you're going to talk to everybody else and you're going to look at everybody else's phone, I think ignoring that, unless you can positively exclude someone as a potential witness, is a problem. Is that actually enough, though, to have the, the case thrown out, which it seems like is what they're trying to do? I mean, that seems kind of extreme to me. I agree. I don't think ultimately they'll be successful and the case will be dismissed, but this is a murder case. So it's one of those things when you're the defense attorney, you have to uh, try all of these avenues and raise all of these issues. If he's convicted and the case goes up on appeal, if he doesn't preserve it down at the trial level, he can't argue it then on appeal. So, you know, some of this, even if you know you're not going to probably be successful in a dismissal, you need to raise the issue if it's an issue. That makes sense. Okay, so likely not going to get thrown out, but we'll see. Uh, but do you think this whole issue with Holder and the fact that he's basically the only guy whose phone they didn't get in search, is that something that you think could come up during the trial in October? Could that be a part of the defense? Absolutely. They're, you know, even if they lose this motion, they're not barred from making any of these arguments at trial, and, and they should. You know, I think there's probably going to be a number of things that they look at, the lack of forensics and, and ties and things like that. But you also, if you can point to someone else, you should. Now, that can be a little a bit of a double-edged sword, because what you don't want to do as the defense is somehow get the jury thinking that you have to prove something. Uh, so you have to be a little bit careful about, you know, pointing to uh, another possible suspect if there isn't something legitimate there to argue. Interesting. Uh, and you mentioned it, forensics. I mean, the defense has said over and over again that there's no forensics or hard evidence uh, that actually connects Richard Allen directly to the murders. There's some ballistic evidence, but, you know, there's already been experts who have said that that's uh, shaky at best. It seems like forensics here would be uh, more of the defense, the lack of forensics would be more of the defense strategy than maybe bringing in this, this other guy. Agree with that. I think that's their best argument, and that's probably the one I would hone in on and spend the most time on. Is you know, if this individual uh, committed these killings, and it's the individual in that video, there should be, or they should have found something uh, to tie him to them. You know, some some sort of fiber or 
uh, DNA evidence or something along those lines, um, it, it's pretty hard to commit a crime and not leave any trace behind. Yeah, that's a that, that's a good point. This whole Odinism, this crazy Odinism cult conspiracy part of this whole thing. Uh, his attorney, Richard Allen's attorneys, have actually accused jail guards of even being tied in uh, to Odinism. Um, Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.